and all the time. Thank you once again for allowing me to come and share with you, brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm not very well read, as the brother said. I have not stayed in school for a long time. I don't know many things, by the way. But the few things I now will share with you, amen? Yeah. I'm not even a scholar. They are, they are scholars. Are we together? I'm just some ordinary guy who knows a few things. Are we together? Hey, are we together? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being a scholar is difficult. And many scholars I met, nobody understood them. Then I discovered that to share the gospel, I need to be understood. Are we together? So I'm in the business of trying to simplify what I know. Praise the Lord. But uh, I'm grateful. I'm really, really grateful to be here. Uh, this afternoon, I just came to tell you one little thing. And then I will ask you five questions. And then you can ask me the rest of the questions. Are we together? Yes. <laughs> yes. Did you hear what I said? I just came to share with you one little thing. Are we together? Yes. Then I will ask you five questions. And after that, you can ask me the rest of what? The rest of the questions. And uh, I will allow you to ask me a question from any direction, knowing very well that one of my answers could be, I don't know. Are we together? <laughs> you can ask me questions from Bible prophecy. Are we together? Bible prophecy, not newspaper prophecy. Are we together? Bible prophecy. You can ask me questions. Anything, anything that is within the Bible. If probably I know the answer, I will share the answer. And then uh, you can ask me also questions about your boyfriends and girlfriends. I know a little bit because I have enough experience. Are we together? I dated so many people that have lost the number and several are Rwandese. Are we together? <laughs> So I even have a Rwandese experience. Are we together? Yes. Yeah. Hey, are we together? Yes. Some are not saying yes. You can't even say yes. Are we together? Yes. You can even ask me questions about your husbands and wives. Are we together? Yes. Because I've been a husband for some time and uh, I've not been a wife. But um, I'm seeing the way wives behave. Are we together? So we will we'll have an, an open session. But this afternoon, allow me to say a prayer and share the word of God. Father in heaven, bless us, bless us, bless us. We plead that you bless us so that we can understand you. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, the message I want to share with you is titled, You Must Have Experience. What is the title? You must have experience. You must have experience. Without experience, you can't be employed. And therefore, you must have what? Experience. Experience is an interaction that gives you a real life as opposed to theoretical understanding. Experience is when you have a real life understanding. Real life understanding. And one day I went to the school of nursing in Baraton where they were training nurses how to, to, to do what? To inject, yes. And after they had been taught how to inject, uh, I got afraid when the teacher said at some point that now they actually had to inject each other. Are we together? Because you cannot know how to inject unless you are inject an actual person. Are we together? And so I, I enjoyed the experience because I was not going to be injected, but I saw them, you know, trembling and what have you. But you see, that was the only way, you know, a real life understanding. Real life what? Understanding. As opposed to theoretical. And that's why I've just come to say this afternoon that you must have what? I've, I've come to say this afternoon that you must have what? I have come to tell you this afternoon that you must have what? I have come to tell you this afternoon that you must have what? Experience. Without experience, you will perform poorly. And so you must have experience. Brothers and sisters, but allow me to say this for the sake of some sinners who made it to the house of God today, that some jobs don't require experience. 
There are certain jobs that don't require experience. For example, you don't need experience for you to be a parent. You just become a parent. Are we together? You can't say that, let me go and rehearse being a parent, then now I'll come and have my own children. No, some jobs don't need experience. If we are together, say amen. amen. And marriage doesn't need experience. So you don't need to live with somebody for three weeks, four weeks, then you say, now I can get married. You don't need experience for marriage. And particularly for sex, let me say it very openly. Some people say that you need experience. You don't need experience. Some things, God puts the software in your head, and when the time comes, you perform so well, somebody thinks you went to college for it. Are we together? It is because you don't need experience. The software is already planted in you by the Almighty God. Hallelujah! Yeah. So in that area, you don't need what? In that area, you don't need what? Why are some people not responding? Is it that you need to brush your teeth or what's your problem? In that area, you don't need what? But brethren, other jobs will be impossible without experience. For example, high level administration. You cannot, can you imagine if today you were just told you are the vice chancellor of this university? You will know how to open the door of the office. Of course, that will mean you will open the door. You will even be able to see until the issues come. And a letter comes from Ministry of Education, Republic of Rwanda, and you read it and you discover that opening the door and sitting is not enough experience to be vice chancellor. Are we together? So you need experience. Another example is military general. Surely, if you are a military general, you must have experience of war. You cannot just learn how to shoot today. Uh, can you shoot there? You shoot. Shoot the other? Uh, shoot. Okay. Now I'm a general. You go to Somalia. You, if you come back, <laughs> you'll be traumatized for life. Are we together? So, you need what? Hey, I'm saying you need what? No, I can't hear you. What do you need? Yeah, that's why I'm saying you must have experience. Unemployed young people are agitating that employers should not demand experience. You know, employers say, oh, three jobs available, Ministry of Water, Rwanda. And then they say you need five years experience. Ah, five years and you just graduated this week. Where do you get the experience? Now young people are saying, no, this business of asking for experience, we don't want. But let me tell you, for the assignment I'm about to talk about, the assignment to take the light to the world, experience is mandatory. For you to go and light the world, you must have what? Let me ask this side. I have not had anything whatsoever from that other side. Allow me to visit them. I will be back. Are we together? Let me visit them. Are we together, brethren? I never heard from you. I said, when I was telling them, when I told them, I told them you must have what? Uh, then you need to raise your volume. You realize this is a strange place. The pulpit is at the side. Are we together? I mean, when in Rome, do what? Romans do. You must have what? Spirit. I'm listening to you guys. Watch out. You must have experience with the light before you go to light the world. Yeah, I understand that English can be complicated. Are we together? Yeah. 
I also don't understand a lot of English. I will be, I'm also learning. But listen again. You know, if you listen three times, you may understand and respond like a believer. That you must have experience with the light before you go to light the world. That's good English. Are we together? This is the kind of things you put on your social media and everyone believes you are just in London. Are we together? That you must have experience with the light before you go to light the world. If I was you, I would be writing it down. And when everybody will be posting it today, I just save it. When everyone has forgotten in June, you post it. <laughs> you must have experience with the light before you go to light the world. <laughs> Brethren, this side, you must have experience with the light before you go to light the world. <laughs> you must have experience with the light before you go to light the world. It's coming up, but it is still at malaria level. Are we together? Let's, let's get it this side. You must have experience with the light before you go to light the world. You are coming up now. That you must have experience with the what? The light. With the light before you go and do what? You see, last evening I told you that you need the light. Then this morning I told you that start with what? Because when you start with the light, you have experience with the light. It is that experience that you must have. And we have just come to say this afternoon that you must have what? Experience. 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 Good. Matthew chapter 11, verse 1 to 5. After Jesus, uh, oh, should I give you time? Okay, sorry. Matthew chapter 11, verse 1 to 5. Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. Matthew. Let people find Matthew. Are we together? Let God's people find Matthew. Some are looking at me, then they stop in Jeremiah. I know you are not in Matthew. Are we together? Just find Matthew. Just find Matthew. Matthew chapter 11. Are we together? Matthew chapter 11. If you are ready, we read, say Amen. Amen. The Bible says, after Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. Verse 2. When John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples, verse 3, to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect somebody else? Verse 4. Jesus replied, you go back and report to John what you hear and what you what you see. Verse 5, the blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. John the Baptist was in prison. Prison is a dark place. He was in darkness whether Jesus was the Messiah. He wanted some light on whether Jesus is the Messiah or not. And therefore, he sent his disciples to Jesus. And Jesus did not give the disciples an answer they expected. They went to Jesus. Hey, Jesus, hello, where you were, where you were. I'm a Hey. Good. And then they say, Jesus, are you the Messiah? And they expected Jesus to say, yes or no. They expected Jesus to say, yes or no. But do you know what Jesus told them? You stay around. You stay with me. Then at the end of the day, go to John and tell him what you do what? What you see and what you do what? They expected a straight answer, but Jesus 
Jesus offered experience. They expected theory, but Jesus offered experience because for you to take light to John the Baptist who is in prison, you must have what? For you to take light to John the Baptist who is in darkness, in prison, he is not sure whether Jesus is the Messiah. You who has the answer must have experience. You must have what? Experience. You must have what? Experience. Jesus told the disciples of John that they needed experience with the light before taking that light to John. Remember last evening and today I have told you from John chapter 8 verse 12 that Jesus is the light of the world. He says, I am the light of the world. And so when they come and say, Jesus, are you the Messiah or not? And Jesus says, you stay with me and have an experience with the light. Once you have an experience with the light, when you go back to John the Baptist, your answer will be the best. And that's why we are saying today, you must have what? Experience. You must have what? Experience. You must have what? Experience. You must have what? Experience, Experience with who? Jesus. The light. For you to take the light, you must have experience with who? Yeah. With the light. You must have experience. When they went back, we don't know what answer they gave, but we know that John the Baptist was satisfied until when his neck was cut. When they went and relayed their experience to John the Baptist, he was satisfied. He never again asked another question whether Jesus was the Messiah. If we are to truly satisfy people as we go to light the world, we must go armed with experience. We must go to people with experience. We must take the light when we ourselves have experience with the light. And that's why the word of God this afternoon is you must have what? The word of God this afternoon is you must have what? The word of God this afternoon is you must have what? Experience. If you are to go and light the world, you need experience with Jesus, the light of the world. What does the church say? Amen. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. The Bible says, oh Jeremiah, sorry. Jeremiah. Let's wait for people to find it. Jeremiah is in which testament? Old Testament, yeah. Just keep going. You will find it before 6 in the evening. Are we together? Yes. Just try. I mean, just put some effort. Are we together? It's even better to stop at Ezekiel or the Isaiah. You are close enough. Are we together? Have you found Ezekiel? Yes. <laughs> we want to read Jeremiah, but I'm just asking, have you found Ezekiel? Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9, the Bible says, these are the words of Jeremiah, but if I say I will not mention his word or speak anymore in his name, his word is in my heart like a what? Like a fire, a fire that is shut up in my what? In my bone, and I am tired of holding it in, and he says, indeed, I cannot, hallelujah. You know, it sounds like Paul the Apostle saying, Woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. Brothers and sisters, Jeremiah accepted to go and light the world. Then he got an experience with the light, and from there on, he couldn't help it. He had to go and light the world. The experience was burning like fire in his bones. He did not need a reminder. He did not need announcement. He did not need motivation. He did not even need to know the salary. He did not even need to know what allowances are available. He just said, I want to preach the gospel. Praise the Lord. 
But when you find people who have no fire in their bones, the first question they ask is, where will I stay? You are inviting them to come and preach, and the first question is, where will I stay? Will you give me money? And when I come, uh, what are the circumstances around there? Is the water clean? How are the people? Are the people friendly? And by the way, how is that area? Are there schools for my children? And generally, if I wanted to go to hospital, are there nearby hospitals? Do they have enough equipment to take care of me? Those are questions of people without fire in their bones. If they had fire in their bones, they will not ask a single question. They will ask, send me, O oh Lord, where do you want me to go? And they will go there. Many questions that we ask betray that we have no experience with the light of the world. There is nothing burning in us. And that's why Awuka wants to go and preach in Huye. And what's the new name of Gitaram? Mohanga. Uh, Mohanga. We want to go and preach in Mohanga. Now you are saying, oh, please remember, those who have not registered, please meet the elders, the bar. Then again at the end of the sermon, please we are going to Mohanga, please register your names. You know why people need daily reminders? They have no experience with Jesus, the light of the world. There is nothing burning inside them. You have to remind, and even after reminding them, you meet them in town tomorrow. Did you register? Ah, I got busy greeting some people, I will register. You meet them next Sabbath. Please remember to register. And then they are just seated there wondering why you are making all the announcements. You know why? There is nothing burning in their bones. And that's why I've come to tell you, brothers and sisters, there will be no lighting of the world unless you have what? Unless you have what? Experience. Unless you have what? Experience. Yeah, there are so many people who want to go out there. Then they give problems. You go out to preach, they get there, they get sick. Who gets sick when we are healing the sick and casting out demons? Unless you are a demon yourself, how are you getting sick? We have packed to go and preach. In, what do you call Kibuye? Kibuye, Kibuye, where are you going? Is that the same? Did the name? Eh? Karonji, yes. yes. You see, I'm, I'm catching up with these new names. Are we together? And you never told me, you, my friends, that you had changed the names. You see, you are not good people. Are we together? But I'm catching up. Now we are going there to preach. When we get there, the people in our team become the problem. Oh, I have a headache. I can't go out today. Oh, that food has a lot of oil. I don't eat oil. Oh, I'm not used to that kind of vegetable. Can I have some chicken leg, please? <laughs> My friend. <laughs> did we come here to feed you or did we come to spread the gospel? The reason we make those kind of demands is because there is nothing that is burning us from within. There is no light of the world. There is no Jesus in our life. Brothers and sisters, if David Livingstone and other missionaries had asked about the condition of Africa before coming, we would still be worshipping donkeys and mountains and rivers. The missionaries made a sacrifice and left their countries with one-way ticket, not two-way ticket, one-way ticket, and they need to read the story of missionaries. I'm not talking about Adventist missionaries. All missionaries who came to Africa, and they walked barefoot when they discovered we were barefoot so that we can be like us. They lived under trees like us. It is because something was burning in their hearts. 400 missionaries came from Europe and went up the Niger Delta. They were going up and all of them except one died because of diseases there. And he wrote a letter back to Europe saying, everyone has died because of diseases. Send more missionaries. 
So somebody to bury colleagues and say send more missionaries, it's because there is something burning inside them. So brothers and sisters, we need to preach. We need to preach with or without faith. We need to preach with or without food. We need to preach in good condition and bad condition. We need to preach everywhere and all over. But that can only be possible when you have experience with the light. You don't need theology training. Theology training may increase your pain and may make you complicated. Are we together? It may add Greek in your sermons and add some Hebrew words in your sermons, but you still need experience with the light of the world. <laughs> it may improve your preaching by giving heavy background and saying the book of Acts was written by Dr. Luke. And then you pause and look at the congregation, whether they know you know Dr. Luke. Are we together? <laughs> then you walk around and you say, that word in Greek, in Greek, you know, Greek is not like in Rwanda. And everyone is amazed at what you are saying. But brethren, at the end of the day, what will keep you in the ministry is an experience with the light of the world. Amen. And what the world wants to see from us, brothers and sisters, is that we have had an experience with the light of the world. And that's why the word of God this afternoon says you must have what? Yes. The word of God this afternoon says you must have what? Yes. The word of God this afternoon says you must have what? Yes. You must have experience. <laughs> These many other questions we ask is because we don't have experience. The experience changed Jeremiah. Without experience, with the light we need, Without experience with the light, we need a lot of sounds and a lot of encouragements and campaigns for us to participate. Have you found people who are very difficult to lead? They don't have experience. Without experience with the light, we are hard to deal with and our leaders suffer. You know, you are there waiting, you say, today we have choir practice at four. And there's somebody who always arrives at 4.45. <laughs> hey guys, I'm sorry. Hey guys, let's just continue. How do we continue when your voice is awkward and you don't even know the words of the song? <laughs> do you know why you are that way? You don't have what? Experience. Why are you that way? You don't have what? Experience. Why are you that way? You don't have what? Experience. Why are you that way? You don't have what? There are people who are chosen to serve the church. You know, we have many departments, children ministries, women ministries, Adventist men, and all these ministries in the church. There are people, since they were chosen, they don't even remember which ministry they were chosen. They have done nothing, 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 nothing. Absolutely nothing. They are seated here, looking at me. They are just seated, and they are looking at me, and they are in charge of this church of a department. Nothing the whole year. And they want to blame church board, pastor. They have all kinds of names. Listen, let me tell you, you lack experience with Jesus. I don't know who you are. Are we together, brethren? But I want you to know it's because you lack experience with Jesus. Amen. Did you understand what I said? Yes. The word of God this afternoon says you must have what? This work is difficult if those involved have no experience. Never try doing God's work with those who don't have what? Hey, never try doing the Lord's work with those who lack what? Hey, never try to do the Lord's work with those who lack what? Experience. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. And that's what's happening in some country, I will not tell you where SDA church members are taking each other to court, they are opening new churches which are not part of the SDA church. The bottom line is that they lack experience with Jesus. Anyone who has experience with Jesus knows that there is nothing to fight for in this church because the head of the church is Jesus. Amen. The head of the church is Jesus. So there is nothing to worry about. Brethren, the biggest problem in the church today is that there is lack of what? Experience. 
Even if you say it in a low tone, it doesn't change the lack of experience. Are we together? What the church is lacking today is what? Experience. Even if you lower your volume, you still lack experience. Are we together? You must have what? Experience. Good. You seem to be teachable. Are we together? Now in Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 8, 9, 10, and chapter 3, verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 8, 9, and 10, and chapter 3, verse 1. It's just a continuation. The chapters and verses were put the other day. But you, son of man, listen to what I say to you. Do not rebel like that rebellious people. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Then I looked, I'm in Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 9 now. Then I looked and saw a hand stretched out to me. It was... In it was a scroll, verse 10, which he unrolled before me. On both, of, both sides of it were written words of lament and mourning and woe. Chapter 3, verse 1. And he said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll, then go and speak to the people of Israel. Let me repeat, because you could have missed the emphasis. Eat this scroll, then go. Eat this scroll, then go. Eat this scroll, then go. Eat this scroll, then do what? Eat this scroll, then do what? You are going must be preceded by eating of the scroll. Eat this scroll, then go. But our problem is we go before what? <laughs> we go before eating. But you see the instructions are eat the scroll. And after eating the scroll, you can now do what? You can now go. But the problem is, we jump up and say, I want to go. And you start going, but you have not done what? You have not eaten the scroll. Only after eating the word of God, from God, can you share it. You cannot share a word that you did not eat. And eating requires chewing and swallowing. Eating requires digestion. Eating requires an experience with the taste of the word in your mouth and its filling in the stomach and it taking over your entire body. Eat, then go. After eating the word of God, when you go, you are sharing your experience of the word of God in your system that you have eaten and digested. But the problem, brothers and sisters, is that we go before eating, and the instructions are, eat, then go. And that's why I've come to tell you this afternoon that you must have what? I've come to tell you this afternoon that you must have what? Eat before going to light the world. Before you go to light the world, eat. And then go light the world. Experience comes first before going out. And that's why this afternoon we are saying you must have what? Revelation chapter 10, verse 9, 10, and 11. Revelation chapter 10, verse 9, 10, and 11. This is the prophecy where there is an angel with one foot, dry land, one foot in the ocean, and he's saying great things, and he's holding a book in his hand. And so, when John the Revelator, there is a difference between John the Revelator and John the Baptist. When John the Revelator saw this angel, the Bible says in verse 9, So I went to the angel and asked him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, Take it and do what? Take it and do what? And it will, be, it will make your stomach what? But it will be what in your mouth? Honey. Sweet as honey. Are we together? Verse 10 says, Then I took 
the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it. And it was sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach became what? Bitter. And then verse 11 says what? And he said to me, you must prophesy again about many people, nations, tongues, and kings. Now this prophecy, brethren, is truly an interpretation of the experience of 1844. After preaching of the gospel that Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, it was very sweet in the mouth. But now, when the reality came, there was disappointment, but now the message in verse 11 is, even though you are disappointed, even though it is bitter in your stomach, you must prophesy again. It is in the basis of this verse that SDA we are still preaching. Hallelujah. Because he said you must prophesy. We said Jesus is coming when we were part of the large Adventist movement, but Jesus did not come. And when later on we were organized into the SDA church, we have not stopped prophesying that Jesus is doing what? He's coming. He's coming. The disappointment continued telling the world that he's coming again. You must prophesy again. But this verse also brings to our attention that experience, whether good or bad, is mandatory for anyone to go and light the world. And that's why this afternoon we are saying, you must have what? You must have what? Good. Let's go to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. In John chapter 4, we find Jesus with some woman. Are we together? Jesus with some non Adventist woman. Are we together? John chapter 4. And Jesus is interacting with some non Adventist woman. And in John chapter 4, Jesus tells this woman several things. And the woman gets so shocked that she leaves the assignment that brought her to the well and she goes to the village to go and light what? <laughs> Did the Samaritan woman have an experience with Jesus? Did the Samaritan woman have an experience with Jesus? Did the Samaritan woman have an experience with Jesus? Just say yes, even if you are not sure, you will look like you know. Are we together? Did the Samaritan woman have an experience with Jesus? Yes. yes. Because they started, but Jesus said, give me water. And the woman said, why should I give you water? You are Ugandan and I'm Rwandan. We don't share what? No, no, I was just reading newspaper. We together, sorry. You are Samaritan. <laughs> you are Samaritan and I'm what? And I'm a Jew. Eh? You, I'm a Samaritan and you are a Jew. We don't share what? And then Jesus tells the woman that if you knew who is asking you for the water, you would have asked for the living water, the water of life. And then the woman says, uh, even if you wanted to give me water, you have nothing to fetch the water from. And a discussion continues. Is that experience or it's not experience? That's experience. And then Jesus says to the woman, go bring your husband. And the woman says, I have no husband. And Jesus says, by the way, I know you have had five others recently. And the one you have currently is not yours. And let me tell you, Jesus is the same. He can speak to any of us that way. That the one you are chatting with now is not the one you are chatting with during divine service. Are we together? Hey, are we together? Yeah, he knows. And the one you are planning to meet this evening, after telling the other one that you will be busy in the choir tonight, is not the one you told yesterday you were in a prayer meeting that you are not in. Are we? Jesus knows. Jesus knows. And he can look at you and say, the one you are spending so much time on, is also spending time on five others. Are we together? So you are just in a network of confusion. <laughs> so this woman was not like you. This woman confessed, left her heart because she now had experience with Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's read the Bible. Verse 39, 40, 41, and 42. John chapter 4, verse 39, 40, 41, and 42. The Bible says, Many of the Samaritans from that town 
believed in Jesus because of the woman's testimony. When she went and told them, he told me everything I ever did. You know why they came? Some of the things she did, those who had that somebody has said everything, came to see who revealed what we did. Can you imagine? She came and said, he told me everything I did. What? They also, who is this who hacked the phone and released the messages of what we did? And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified that he told me all that I, I, I ever did. And those who ever did with the heart came. Are you seeing how many people should be in the church if Jesus told you what you ever did? <laughs> This church will be full, but the people you ever did with are outside the church because you have not gone. Are we together? You did us. That's not English. Are we together? That sounds English. Verse 14. So when the Samaritans had come to Jesus, they urged Jesus to stay with them. And how many days did he stay? When you stay two days, is there experience or no experience? This experience, they told Jesus, listen, we hear that you've been telling people what they ever did. We also want to know if you know what we did. And Jesus said, it's okay. And they told Jesus, because we are so many and our network of being players is too wide, we will need how many days? This campus may need 45 days. Are we together? But the Samaritan village needed how many days? Yeah. Just the way you guys look like. Generally, particularly those who are sweating on the nose. You just, two days are not enough. And those who are wiping need 60 days. Are we together? I caught you. That's okay. Everyone feels guilty. Are we together? I saw even faithful swiping there. No. What? So when the Samaritans had come to him, they asked him to stay with them for how many days? Because I told you the word of God says you must have what? You must have what? Verse 41. And many more believed because of his own Hallelujah. After two days experience, they now believe. Verse 42. Then they turned to the woman. They turned to the woman now and said, Now we believe, not because of what you say, for we ourselves have heard him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. What does the church say? You must have what? The Samaritan woman had experience and from her experience she went to invite others and when the others came they told Jesus we need how many days? Two days and they stayed with Jesus for how many days? And they had two days experience with Jesus and they tell the woman listen now we believe not because of what you say no 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 not because of what you say now we believe because we ourselves have heard him and we know that indeed he is the Christ. What do you say? The Samaritan woman had an experience with Jesus that she invited others. The others came because of her invitation but stayed because of the experience with Jesus. Now this is very important for church leaders and anyone who cares about the church. People will come to church because of our invitation. Brethren, even pretend that you understand my knowing. Are we together? I'm saying that people will come to church because we have invited them. But people will stay in church because of their experience with Jesus. They may come because we invited them. They may come because they heard. They may come because they read. They may come because 
they are required to attend church, but they will only stay because of their experience with Jesus. Amen. I have said a very big thing, but I know you are either you have not understood or you don't care that you understood or you have no potential to understand. <laughs> Let me repeat. People will come to the church because we invited us. But they will only stay in this church because of their experience with Jesus. <laughs> Let me break it down. We have retention problems in church. We baptize a hundred thousand people, but we don't see them in the congregation. Am I speaking English? That we baptize a hundred thousand people, but when we look around the church, we don't do what? It's like they came and sat down and stood up and what? And left. And so we have problems retaining people. Somebody has said that while the door is open one end, the door is open the other end. It's like people are walking into the church and walking out. You know what? They come in because we invited them. When they come around, they find an experience with the Rwandese instead of an experience with Jesus. And so they discover, oh, if this is a Rwanda experience, I can have Rwanda experience anywhere. I don't have to be around here to have Rwanda experience. And they walk out. <laughs> we have retention problems in church because the members lack experience with Jesus, the light of the world. You need experience with Jesus before you go to invite anyone. But you need experience in a church that will retain people who are converted. Today, she's in her church, not SDA church. Why? Because she had come to have an experience with me and not with Jesus. Unfortunately, for you to interact with me, you need to interact with Jesus first. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah again. So to have an experience with me without Jesus is difficult mathematics. Are we together? You must interact with Jesus. Then inside there, you will find I'm walking around. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so, this lady I'm telling you about would have said if this verse was switched to my situation and say that I believed because of you I wanted to marry you. But because I didn't marry you, I no longer believe. But when people come to church, let them have an experience with who? Because when they have an experience with Jesus, they will stay in the church. What do you say, church? You must have experience. Martha got so busy while Mary was getting an experience with Jesus. You remember Jesus visited Martha and Mary, and Mary sat down to have an experience with Jesus, and Martha went to have an experience with utensils, fire, and other cooking stuff. Are we together? What, are, what experience are you getting in church? You could be having experience playing instruments. Are we together? No, there's a lot of experience in church. You can even get experience in church of leadership. You can even sharpen your gift of singing. You can even become a good public orator. Those are the kind of experiences you, have, you will get in church, but they will not help you. The key experience is experience with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah again. Experience with who? I can come here and have a lot of experience preaching. Preach here, preach there, preach there, and I have a lot of experience preaching, but if I have no experience with Jesus, I'm going nowhere. I need experience, not in preaching, but experience with Jesus. Amen. Say amen. amen. That was a very big point. Can you say amen again? Amen. Say a louder amen. amen. Experience comes from study, prayer, and tested faith in daily living. So let me ask you, my friends, do you need an experience with Jesus, the light of the world? Is there anyone who needs experience with Jesus, the light of the world? Let me see by the show of hands. Let's pray. Father in heaven, look at our hands. We need an experience with him so that we can truly take the light out there. 
And we pray that when people come to our church, they will find an experience with you and not the politics of our church. That when people come to the church, they will find us behaving like Jesus, interacting like Jesus, and treating each other like disciples of Jesus. May this experience be ours. May we remember that we must have experience in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Now I close to how many questions? Five questions. Are you ready? Yeah. Is Bible study or someone the only experience a new convert means? Uh, I want one person from here to come and answer the question. Yes. Can you choose one person here to come? I want one person from every direction. Are we together? Can we get one person here quickly before I choose? And the one who looks down or avoids looking at me, I pick that one. Are we together? So you better look like, at me like you know. Are we together? So that I will bypass you. Can we get one person here to come here and answer the question? Yeah, yeah that gentleman in blue suit. Yeah, come. Come. I like blue, are we together? And many of my girlfriends told me I look good in blue, are we together? Since then I've been unable to resist. <laughs> Can we get one? Come here, come here, brother. Come here, I'll ask you a question. Can we get one person here? Let's save time, are we together? One person here. And this other side, you should be choosing somebody. Are we together? Be one. Okay, thank you, brother. You look even like a prophet. Come. <laughs> come, come, this side. Okay. Can we get one believer here, please? You are feeling hot, isn't it? <laughs> Let me tell you, all of a sudden it's very hot in the building and it's only hot around here, are we together? And the other side is getting hotter. <laughs> so can we have somebody uh, at the back region there? Or somebody is there? Are you telling me? Can somebody come? Okay. Okay. I'm tempted to choose now. One. Two. Now everyone is looking everywhere, just behaving like that. Three. Yeah, my brother. There's, there's my brother there, uh, a baratonian at blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this man. Uh, in fact, it's because I've missed him long time. Are we together? Yeah. He's a good gentleman. When he was in Kenya, I don't know here in Rwanda. Uh, are you my brother? Yeah, okay. I will ask you the most difficult question. You, you wait here. Are we together? <laughs> now, I know it's cooler here. Are we together? Yeah. Can we have one person here? There is no lady, isn't it? So we are going to get a lady from this side because now the ladies have become so humble. Are we together? <laughs> just saying, Pastor, even just look at me. Don't even call my name. I mean, I'm just a servant of God. Leave me alone. Are we together? That's what they are telling themselves. Sympathetic, are we together? <laughs> Can we get one person, please? <coughs> Come.
come, sister. Come, 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 sister. Yeah, it's just you. I will ask you a very easy question that you may have challenges answering, but it will be okay. Come, come, come. <laughs> just come. Yeah. Can we get sisters here, please? Any sister, come. This sister is my friend. So, hallelujah. Okay, can we? Can you donate a sister? Come, sister. Yeah. Yeah, you looked behind because it's you. Now, let me ask. I just want you, what you will do, my friends, if you can't answer my question for any reason, you pick somebody to answer the question. That's your liberty now. Because you know these people better than me. That's why I call you. I call you because you know these people. So I will ask questions and then... So I will ask you the first question. You, you will just listen to the question first. The first question is, is Bible study or sermon the only experience a new convert needs? When somebody is getting converted, the only experience they need, is it the sermon and Bible study? That's the question I would want you to answer. Are we together? Hold on to that question tightly. Question number two, my brother. Between knowing the truth and an experience of Christ in members of a new church, which one does a new convert need? You know, there are people who say you just need to know the truth. But there's also the experience you get in the church. Which one is important for a new convert? If you are newly converted, do you want to know the truth or do you want a good experience in the church that you are joining? Which one is important for a new convert? New convert. Are we together, brother? Good. Uh, my brother here. What experience sends new converts out of the church? That's your question. If a new convert came to this church, what will send them out of the church? What will make them say, no, 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 no. I don't want to belong to this church. What will send them out of this church? Is that okay? Yeah. Then, uh, sister, what experience should new converts have? If you are a new convert, if you are new in SDA church, what do you expect to experience in this church? When you come, what will you be very happy if you experienced in this church? You are just new. You just got baptized at a Mahoro Stadium after a big crusade. Are we together? And there were so many choirs singing. You even saw them. The ambassadors were there. Did you, did you hear them singing? And now you are converted. You are new in church. What do you expect in this church? You have the question? Good. And sister, uh, how are you, sister? No. <laughs> What experience does each of us need? If there is just one thing you are to tell all of us, what experience do we need? If you are just to advise us, you are advising us and telling us this is the experience you need. Whether you are new or old or whatever and you came to church today, this is the experience you need. Are we together? So these people are going to answer this question very briefly or choose somebody who will answer the question. So we will begin from the beginning. Hallelujah. When they get the answer correctly, please you give them support. Are we together? Points. So how many points do we have in total? 100 points. And we can tell whether we are passing. Are we together? Begin, brother. Now we have a question here which says, is the Bible study and someone the only experience a new convert needs? Tell us. You have three sentences to make. No. No. What other experience do they need? They need the experience to share the good news about what made me converted. First of all, this brother says that no. Do you agree with that answer? Yes. Yes. So brother, you are, you are, you are, so far you are doing very well. <laughs> now you are about to start failing yourself. Are we together? 
No, it's okay, brother. Thank you so much. Let us conclude that answer by saying that Bible study and the sermon is not the only one experience. There should be more. After I listen to a sermon, after Bible study, I still need another what? Please, can you put your hands together for this brother? Thank you, thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. You are a good man. Call me during your wedding. <laughs> now, brother, between knowing the truth and an experience of Christ in members in a new church, which one do you need most? Proceed. Experience with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Is he right or wrong? Yes. Yeah, you see, once you get the truth, you are already a convert. So, you have already had an experience with the truth. Now, the next experience you need is an experience with who? Jesus. With Jesus. And you want to see Jesus in the members you are now joining. You want to see Jesus in them. If, if he got it right, can you give him a round of applause? Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Are you pursuing theology? Uh, invite me during your ordination. Are we together? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, it's your turn, my good brother. What experience sends new converts out of the church? Now this one, you know, a new convert come, then leaves the church. What is it? What happened? Tell us. Thank you, Pastor, for the question. I think that uh, this question is true, mm. and we have this experience. Mm. You have talked about uh, the strategy of retention. Mm. So, as Christians, we should just get the uh, strategy to retain our new converted people. Mm. But uh, most of these uh, strategies is to connect them or to tell them the truth about Jesus. Then, when they are connected with Jesus, they will stay in the church. But what makes them leave? What, why do they leave? Why are they going? Because we baptize people, then we don't see them. We see them once, then they are. What happens? Uh, according to what uh, we have seen and yeah. uh, maybe the experience that we have, is that when they come, mm. they either in because they have to be with people, not because of Jesus. Then when they are disappointed because of those people, they will leave it out. Uh, you got it, you got it. The experience that makes people leave the church is experience with the people, with the us, with us. Experience with us, we gossip about them. We say, oh, their trouser is too high, it doesn't touch the shoe. Oh, their hair is not nice. Oh, they don't know how to walk. Oh, and when they get that experience, they say, let me go back to the bar and drink alcohol because this place is not safe. Let us talk some else. Yeah. We found that most of people that were just bringing it in the church, yeah. they found us that we are not different from the people that they live outside there. Experience with us. Brethren, if people leave the church, who is the problem? Yes. Jesus is not the problem. It is us. Even if they come wearing a miniskirt, the problem is how we say it. We are the problem. Thank you so much. Can you give a round of applause for him? What experience should new converts have? The new ones now. Thank you, Pastor. Um, when we are preaching to the world, people see Jesus in us. So when they get converted and come to church, they, ex they expect us to be like Jesus. So when they come to church and don't see that Jesus, right there's there. no experience. Right there. They expect <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They expect to see Jesus in us. Are we together? Did you hear that story of a boy who was begging for food and he was standing at the bakery just looking at bread? Then a certain woman came and said, boy, come I buy you bread. And he bought bread for the boy. And the boy was so shocked. When the lady was going, the boy ran after the woman and said, 
excuse me ma'am, I'm sorry, are you Jesus? <laughs> because that act of kindness was so great that the boy thought that this is Jesus. <laughs> if there is anything the world needs to see, they need to see Jesus in who? In us. If new members come, they need to see who in us. If they don't see Jesus, what will they do? So when members leave the church, new members, remember those of you who remain inside are the problem. Sister, how are you again? Thank you. Is everything okay? Yeah, it's okay. How is the weather? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you appreciate the weather. Okay. Uh, so, what do you think? What experience do all of us need? New members, old members, all of us. You know, you need to talk to somebody who came today. And even some you will be talking to will be watching this because somebody is recording. So, you need to speak to them and say, You. Uh, as an advice for the church. Uh, about experience. Don't, yeah. don't give them these other advices. They, yes. they tell us about experience. My advice for experiencing Jesus here in church, uh, I know we, as Adventists, you have many books, so I advise you to go to read it, but in groups. Not here only on the pulpit, but in groups, small groups, so that everyone can ask questions and we we know how to know uh, to catch him where he stands and to explain it more. Uh, the other experience with Jesus is that we have to go and find the needy ones and to help them, not only to give them the scriptures or read for them the books but to do something that is physical or they can do. Hallelujah! Thank you so much. You see, what you have just said is what Jesus said. That I was hungry and you gave me what? Not verses on the Sabbath, you gave me food. <laughs> I was naked and you did not dress me on the prophecy of the beast. You gave me actual clothes. Are they listening? I hope so. And I was in prison. And what did you do? Visited. You visited me. This is the experience each one of us needs to have. Be like Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And finally, we need to tell them, sister, that they need an experience with Jesus himself. You tell them. Church, we have to experience Jesus within ourselves. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Give a round of applause, please. Uh, I believe I still have five minutes or six minutes, isn't it? Yeah, so can you, can we have, uh, okay. Yeah, I was just testing the water. <laughs> and he has told me what I needed to hear. Now, can we have a few questions that we can respond to brethren, and then after that, we will call it a day. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord again. Amen. So is there anyone who has a question? I think we are through with the... This thing turns on. I saw him doing this. Let's 
listen to the questions, uh, then probably we may have some answers, probably. Okay, thank you, Pastor. Uh, a question is about uh, experience. Yeah. As we have been discussing this morning about the, the preparing for church, and now we've been discussing about the experience. I'm looking at the experience that we have as uh, SDS. We, as Seventh day Adventists, uh, we will be people that will be distinguished from others. But uh, it looks contrary. Because now, when you go to the tax park or to the market, you cannot identify who is an admin. We grow the same. What can we do to have that experience? And probably in the majority of people, we can easily be distinguished. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, I need to hear four questions, then I respond to four questions. Sorry. Each question carries to the five marks. Thank you. Experience is, is knowledge gained from through involvement in, in the previous event. And I can, when you have a lot of experience, they say um, you are an expert. Is there any level of experience? As ST, STA members, do we need to have so that we can be expert? We don't need a lot of experience with Jesus. Okay, okay. He's talking about expertise. Okay. Uh, there is, oh, there's, there's another question. Maybe the sister there. Thank you so much. My question is about, we talked about experience. All I may have been an advent for a long time, but one thing I've learned is that the Bible tells us what has to be experienced with Adventists. On Sabbath, it's a day of worshiping and praising the Lord. But if you ask most of us here, we leave people at home working and you come to church. For example, today is a Sabbath, but we made others to get the security and the gate instead of coming to church. Is that the experience that we are giving out here? Because when you look around, we are going to turn to the Kanabe church. We have a security man who is an advocate. I've never seen in a church already doing the security for our cars. And we say, you know what, on Sunday, it's the day of praise that the experience was supposed to be. upon myself. <laughs> the other one gave up, isn't it? She's out. Oh, she's still there. Okay, that's the last one. Oh, yes. Thank you, Pastor, for the message. Mine is uh, about... Uh, Maybe you start. There are people who want, want to see you. I'm not sure why, but just start. <laughs> All right. Mine is about uh, having an experience with God normally have uh, testimonies. Is it, uh, is it, uh, I don't see our church, we don't have that uh, moment where we are given a chance to give testimonies. Because God touches each and every one of us in a different way. He uses us, he uses many gifts that we may, the Holy Spirit may, uh, may, 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 may have given us. So, we, we, why don't we have a, maybe, or why don't we have that as a, because it's part of preaching. Because you've had an experience with God, there's some information that God wants you to share. So, is it about that uh, we, we, is it about we don't, we don't like it, or is it, because other churches, they do it. But uh, why not us? Good, thank you, brethren. Four questions, 25 marks each, let's begin with the last one. Are we together? The last question is asking why do we have time to give testimony? And let me say that SDA Church has got two major opportunities for you to give testimony. Number one, during Sabbath school. If you read the Sabbath school manual, before you start discussing the lesson on Sabbath in your small group, 
you are supposed to read the names of members present, who is absent, is there anyone who evangelized this week, is there anyone who has a testimony, that is part of what should happen during Sabbath school. Are we together, sister? That is supposed to happen, that is our policy on Sabbath school classes. Now that we don't do it, it's not because of the church, maybe the local circumstances are the problem, but not because the SDA church has a problem with testimonies. Number two, during Holy Communion, people are given opportunity to stand and testify what God has done for them for the last three months since they had communion. That's another opportunity. Again, there are churches who practice it, SDA, and there are churches who don't practice it. But now let me quickly finish by saying that when giving a testimony, the focus should be on what God has done and not your experience in smoking, drinking, surviving a road accident. No, there are people who will describe the accident until you wonder, where is the Jesus in the accident? Are we together? <laughs> Then the vehicle came. The vehicle was moving very fast. Let me tell you, it was fast. Now, okay, what are you telling us? Are we together? So we may need to retrain people on testimony. So sister, I think that is there. And then many times when we preach, we preachers give our testimonies. Are we together? I just told you about a, a few testimonies of my own life. So testimonies are there. Are we together? Thank you, sister. Now I'm going to the other question. Are we together? Are there people who are praying for me? <laughs> uh, the Sabbath command is a command to everyone that each one must rest from their work. But the Bible also recognizes that there are people who work on Sabbath. And actually Jesus insinuated it by saying that the priests and the church leaders work on which day? On Sabbath. There is no day I sweat more than on Sabbath. Preach Friday evening, preach Friday divine service, afternoon come and preach. No other day do I work like I work on Sabbath. But this kind of work is permitted. Are we together, brethren? But there is a problem when you leave your non Adventist or Adventist maid at home who should be listening to the gospel and you come along. But because of the world we live in, it has become also necessary that we have watchmen at the gate. You will find that in other places where we come from, and some of you know because you come from that place, is that we have connected a long wire from the church with a speaker like this one in the watchman's house. Then we had another long one with a box speaker like this one in the kitchen. Because there are people whose duty must be done whether Sabbath or not what? Sabbath. But now that they are within our compound, we give them an opportunity that while they are going on about their services, they also get an opportunity to listen to whose what? To God's word. Now, that question is very difficult, but let me say that there are things that can be done on Sabbath. And Jesus talked about situations of rescuing life when a donkey falls in a pit. And so in that situation, I would say that sometimes it may be necessary for some people. Now in a church that we are conscious that our watchman is an Adventist, maybe we need to create duty rounds. Are we together? And these are things that can be done. Now let me explain, brethren. We are not perfect. You may find that the local pastor and the leaders may not have thought about it. Instead of us condemning them, we are supposed to offer a solution. For example, we say, why don't we allow two deacons today who are on duty to watch the cars so that the watchman on duty can sit in church? So we are offering a solution because we also live in a real world where if you leave the cars and come here, you may have no cars to bring next Sabbath. Are we together? 
So I'm saying that we may need some wisdom to apply to it. We can say that since we must do this, why don't we assign the deacons? Because deacons are the ones in charge of this work. And the deacons put themselves in shift, are we together? And this can be done. It is more solution oriented than just focusing on the problem. Is that okay, brethren? Is that okay, brethren? The questions were mine. Each question carries 25 points. I don't know what you gave me. Now, the other question, the, the other brother was asking about expertise. That when we are gaining experience, will we become experts? And let me answer by saying that the experience we are gaining is to become more and more like Jesus. Are we together? And so, the more experience we get, the more like Jesus we become. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 4, verse 13 or verse 12, that when they beheld John and Peter, they said, these people must have been with who? Jesus. With Jesus, because they had changed. So the expertise we need is not experts in keeping the Sabbath, is not experts in reading spirit of prophecy, is not experts in reciting verses. The expertise we need is to be more and more and more like Jesus. The last question here. What was the question? I'm trying to remember now. Trigger my memory. Aha. That we are Adventists, but when we go to the market, we just look like everybody else. Brethren, what will make us stand out from others is not significantly our dress and our looks, but our conduct. The reason why we look like others is because when others curse, when they are angry, we also curse. When others cheat on their customers in the market, others try to be corrupt. We also try to be what? To be corrupt. And so we look like others. But if we all dressed like the world, but behaved like Jesus, we will still be different. Oh, you didn't hear that. If we all dress like the world, like, but behave like Jesus, we will be different. Behavior makes us stand out. I went to some village one day and I was told that, ah, we know these SDS because these guys never divorce. There was a village somewhere deep in, in Nandi, a place called Asuriet. I met some people there and they said, ah, we know Adventists. Those people, while many families are having problems, for them when they have a problem, an elder or a pastor goes and they solve the problem. So Adventists are not known for what we may think they should be known. They are known because of the way their families are together. What will make you stand out at work? When others complain about the boss and say that boss must go, do you join them? If you join them, there is no difference. I'm through with my assignment. Anything I do beyond here is outside the contract. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, brethren, I'm through with my assignment. I just came to tell you that you need to go light the world. But I began by telling you that you will need the light. And then you need to start your life with what? With the light. And you must have experience with the what? With the light. And when all that happens, you will just go and light the world. May the Lord bless you so much. Amen. I will pray for you, then uh, I will take my seat, and then I will allow this brethren to come and give a lot of thanks. Are we together? You know, most of these speeches we already know. Are we together? You will thank the choir, you will thank me. Are we together? And you will send me with the greetings. These are things we know. So you can just say cut and paste. Are we together? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, you have been so good to us. We have come to the end of the assignment that you gave us for this weekend to go light the world. 
we pray that these things we have learned will put them in practice. And we pray that you will bless everyone who came to church. You will bless Aoka, that it will move from one glory to another, that it will continue being the best institution, not just in Kigali, not just in Rwanda, not just in East Central Africa, but in the entire world for the glory of your name. Make the best out of this institution. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.